Coming up this week on the Double T Insider, we give you a behind-the-scenes look at how the game on the court gets on your TV. Don Ward has played a big role here late in the season for the Red Raiders soccer team as the program goes into the second round of the NCAA championships. We introduce you to the senior. We unveil our new series full time out as Red Raiders and Lady Raiders have 60 seconds to answer 10 random questions. Another installment of In the Zone is here as we introduce you to Dusty Hannes and Kennedy Kithika has continued to make history this season for Red Raider cross country. We catch up with the runner as he heads for nationals. That and more coming up next on the Double T Insider. Let's go! The Double T Insider is brought to you by the Texas Tech University College of Media and Communication and is entirely produced by students of the college. Welcome into the Double T Insider. I'm Erica Taylor and this week we come to you from the United Spirit Arena where the Red Raider and Lady Raider basketball seasons are underway. And I'm Joshua Cook. With that comes televised games. We give you a behind the scenes look at how the game gets from the court to your television screen at home. We go behind the scenes at Raider Vision. Fans enjoy watching the game on their televisions at home, on their computers, or their mobile devices. But how does it get there? When you take a quick stroll underneath the stands inside the United Spirit Arena, you will find the visiting locker rooms, home locker rooms, the media workroom, and then central control. This is Raider Vision. Raider Vision pretty much um, films and captures all of the sporting events, uh, football of course, volleyball, soccer, um, and next semester they're going to do baseball. So we pretty much cover almost all the sports that Tech has. There are a lot of people involved to make it all come together from the director to the replay operators and everyone is needed to make it work in the end. This job is probably the furthest thing you can get away from an individual job. I mean, it takes everyone. Pretty much, you know, I've kind of thought of it as it's kind of like a puzzle. You need every single piece of the puzzle for the production to work and to go smoothly. And, you know, if you're missing out on one piece, you don't get the full picture. Pretty much, I would say this is a hands-on job. You work together with a lot of people. It's not um, one person, you do your own job, and you pretty much it's a team work. So if one person doesn't do their specific job, it's going to not um, work well with another person's job. When it comes to working for Raider Vision as a student, just go do it. Advice for all of y'all looking for sports, I mean, you've just, you've got to put your name out there. You have to go and talk to people, make yourself available. You cannot say no. And you've got to show them that you are extremely excited to be there and you help out and you keep asking, what can I do? What can I learn? How can I do this? With the hands-on portion of it, you know, I, I've worked with cameras. I've got to see all the different functions with the camera that I never um, had a chance to do. And pretty much with the control room, the same things, all the different buttons and components about it. Reporting for the Double T Insider, I'm Joshua Cook. Coming up next, we debut our new series, Full Time Out, as Lady Raider Casey Moore sits down with us and answers 10 questions in 60 seconds. And later, we introduce you to a senior that continues to make a big impact on and off the field for the Red Raider soccer team. The Double T Insider rolls on after this. 
Welcome back to the show. I'm now joined by Rhiannon Rowley. And Rhiannon, you found out how special this season was for one of the seniors on the Red Raider soccer team. Yes, I did, Erica. She was the only Red Raider to score in the first ever NCAA game on Friday against University of North Texas. We'll be introducing you to Don Ward. Number 22, Don Ward. Two chances in the first half to score now. Second half is here, and now ball getting in to Don Ward. Ward in the box. Ward's going to head it forward, and goal, Texas Tech! Don Ward! Senior Don Ward had a standout performance against the Mean Green to lead the Red Raiders to victory. And even though she was the only player to score, she stays true to the old notion that there's no I in team. Whether it's me or someone else, I'm just glad we're getting wins and that we're able to keep going forward. As a veteran on the team, Ward knows how to fuel the fire in her teammates during each and every game, and senior Morgan Johnson can vouch on how much of an impact Ward is. On the field, I think that uh, she brings a different kind of energy. She like makes people want to play hard just like her. And off the field, you can always hear her cheering and yelling for you, and it makes you just want to play better. Her teammates aren't the only ones to recognize her energetic play. Head coach Tom Stone sees the tenacity that shines through in his senior forward. Uh, she's absolutely a team first player and has realized the benefit of putting the team ahead of herself. And so just her determination and perseverance to want to get on the field and help our team win in her senior year has been a driving force in her play and then obviously in our team. And I think the younger players look at her with great admiration because of the way she stuck with it and has earned every bit of the credit and the opportunity that she's getting right now. And as she rounds out her college career, she's hoping to leave a lasting impression. You know, I came here to be a part of the program to help it grow. And I think that's been key because this wasn't a program that started off strong. And it's been really something special to be a part of a program that has been, this, has been able to grow into this success. For the Double T Insider, I'm Rhiannon Rowley. Have you ever been asked if you are stranded on a desert island what three items you would bring or what's your biggest pet peeve? Well, Erica Taylor asks those very questions in her new segment, Full Time Out. Double T Insider, I'm Erica Taylor, and we're taking a full time out with Lady Raider, Casey Morris, a new game where I give her 10 scenarios and she has to answer them to the best of her ability all in 60 seconds. All right, Casey, are you ready? Yeah. All right, 60 seconds on the clock, please. Okay. If I was stranded on a deserted island, the three things I must have are... Um, shoes. <laughs> shoes, clothes, uh, food. The first thing on my mind on a Monday morning is... Um, school. My teammates say I am... Tough. My first job was... No job. I would donate a million dollars to um, charities. The most important thing I've learned at Texas Tech is um, to be humble. My favorite class at Texas Tech sports PR with Chris Cook. If I could teleport back into time, I would travel to when I was uh, probably about two years old. My favorite cartoon character as a kid was Bugs Bunny. My biggest pet peeve is um, being weak. Sweet, 54 seconds. Yes, congratulations, <laughs> you beat the clock. And we just took a full time out with Casey Morris. Thanks for playing. Thanks, Erica. In this week's In the Zone, we introduce you to brand new Red Raider basketball player, Dusty Hannes. Dusty Hannes, freshman guard, Little Rock, Arkansas. What made you choose Texas Tech? Um, it was my first official visit, and you know, the, my weekend here was great. I, I loved every second of it. And when I got back home, you know, I was told to you know let it sink in a couple of days, not make a decision on the spot. But all I could think about was you know how much fun I had here and how like I felt like family with the staff and stuff. So I just committed, you know, about a week after that officially. And how did it feel coming in and realizing there might be some coaching changes a little bit into your time here? Um, uh, it was it was difficult but you know it, it worked out perfect. I love Coach Walker that's who recruited me and 
uh, everyone was real positive throughout the whole thing and you know, look, I'm almost, we're in the best situation. I'm in the best situation that I could ask for right now with Coach Walker. Do you have any strange superstitions that are like, what do you call it, habits, something you do before the game to get um, ready? I actually started um, making sure I had like a magazine or, you know, something interesting that took a while to read. Like I would just, I would read about, you know, theories like the JFK assassinate, just stuff that was really interesting. And it took my mind off the game because, you know, if I start thinking about the game too much, uh, yeah, I get a little too jittery and, you know, sweaty palm, just like sitting there nervous. But when I read, you know, it just keeps me calm and then, you know, the game comes to Any go-to magazines? Um, well, ESPN Mag is great, uh, Sports Illustrated and all that stuff. And then I'll, I'll look at, like, trucking magazines, like big trucks and cars and stuff. I like cars. Favorite car would probably be uh, probably a Lamborghini Gallardo, just because the first I saw one in person in Florida, and I got to go up to it. That and a Maybach were parked at this mall, and I just couldn't get away from there. It's just so awesome. But um, yeah, those are my two favorite cars. Do you have a favorite athlete? Uh, yeah, I like I like Jimmer Fredette a lot. Um, JJ Redick, those are two of you know, people I watched every game I could of them in college. And um, in football, uh, he retired with Sean Andrews. I grew up with him and he made you know, three Pro Bowls with the Eagles and he's like been a brother to me. And then my godfather's Dusty Baker for the Reds and I try to keep in contact with him. Very cool. Uh, if you had to pick a favorite non-mainstream sport, like something they do in the Olympics, what would it be? Um, not in the Olympics. It can be in the Olympics. Uh, I'd, I'd probably do ping pong. Or ping pong? Ping pong or pool. Do you think you'd be a successful ping pong or pool competitor? I, pool, I'm pretty competitive, but ping pong, I, I need more practice, but I'm pretty, I, I'm okay at ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so my dad, my dad always called me, like just hearing me on dust man, dust man, and then uh, that's the only thing I've ever been called. I've never really had a nickname. <laughs> I mean, my name's a nickname. Uh, Dusty's not like on any of my birth certificates because my godfather's name is just given, but my real name's Gerald, like my dad and his dad. I'm the third, but it's kind of weird. Like I, uh, all my documents at Tech, like I'm under Gerald Hannis, like when they call roll, and I'll just forget that, you know, like I'm, just call me Dusty. <laughs> So GH3. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. <laughs> Start new one. GH3. Next, we give you a preview of what's coming up for Texas Tech Athletics. And he's at it again. Kennedy Kithika keeps going the distance, breaking through to the cross country NCAA championships. Hear more of his story after the break. Welcome back to the show everyone. A few weeks ago we introduced you to cross country runner Kennedy Kithika and all his successes so far this season that he's been having. And now, a few weeks later, he continues to find success out on the track which has landed him a spot in the NCAA cross country championships. Erica Taylor has the story. Junior cross country runner Kennedy Kithika has proven he can go the distance and then some. The Kenya native is second to none, claiming first place victories in each of the six meets for Texas Tech this season. And now he's looking to capture the biggest title of them all in the NCAA cross country championships on Saturday. As I go to national, I know I still have competition there. The more how, how I feel like I know I'm, I'm good because how I have done for several meters, I have, I have learned a fairly good time compared to other people who are running, planning with the competition. So how I feel in my body, I know I'm good now this season and I can go there and do something great. Before his journey on the course as a Red Raider, Kithika earned two NAIA national individual titles from Wayland Baptist. The junior transfer contributes his success to his preparation and his support system. However, Texas Tech head coach John Murray knows there's something more than those two qualities that pushes Kithika across the finish line. That's one thing that makes him strong as an athlete is that he's overcome barriers through his life and so a, a barrier of an, of an opponent or a course or a certain time to run isn't quite as daunting as it may be to someone who hasn't overcome the, all the barriers that 
that he has had to, uh, had to conquer. And with one final race left, Kennedy Kithika is in pursuit of his first NCAA Division I championship title. And if success comes when preparation meets opportunity, well, Kithika couldn't have placed himself in a better position. Each and every day after my training, when I got to the meet, I was feeling getting better each and every day. So my training was so good. Even now, the way I feel, this, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go for the Nationals and do something good there. All right, everyone, get ready to take notes. Here's what's coming up for Texas Tech Athletics this week. The Red Raiders start off the weekend in Tallahassee as Texas Tech soccer faces Florida State in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Red Raiders defeated North Texas on November 10th in Lubbock 2-0 to, to advance to the second round match. First kick is set for 6 p.m. at the Seminole Soccer Complex. And on Saturday, Red Raider cross-country runner Kennedy Kithika will continue his run at history at the NCAA Championships in Louisville, Kentucky. Kithika looks to become Texas Tech first ever male NCAA cross-country champion. At Boone Piggins Stadium on Saturday afternoon, the number 23 Red Raiders face the 24th ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys in a top 25 showdown. Tech enters the game 7-3 overall and 4-3 in Big 12 play, while Okie State comes in with a 6-3 overall mark and a 4-2 record in conference play. Game can be seen on FSN with kickoff slated for 2.30 p.m. Red Raider Volleyball returns home to the United Spirit Arena on Saturday to kick off its final homestand of the 2012 season. Tech faces Kansas State on Saturday with first serve set for 6 p.m. and the entire match can be heard on KTXT The Raider 88.1 FM. After spending the first two games of the 2012-2013 season on the road, the Lady Raiders finally get to play in front of a home crowd on Sunday as Tech faces Lipscomb in the home opener. Tech will try to improve to 2-1 and one with first tip set for 2 p.m. inside the USA. Before the Thanksgiving break, Red Raider basketball faces off Grambling State on Tuesday inside the USA, Tech will try to improve to 3-0 in the 2012-2013 campaign with a win. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m. And finally on Wednesday, the Red Raider volleyball team concludes their 2012 season with a home match against the Baylor Bears. First serve is set for 6 p.m. inside the USA. That does it for our show this week, everyone. Thanks for watching. And be sure to tune in next week as well. Also, go like our Facebook page and never miss another episode. For Joshua Cook, I'm Erica Taylor. Have a great week, everyone.